Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Nicole and today we are talking all things paint. Now, as you probably know, we are moving in very, very soon, finally, to our new home and we were walking around and I'm looking at all of the walls and they are yellow. Like yellow, yellow. It's it's blowing my mind, to be completely honest. I think most of us kind of think of builder gray, you know, white, maybe some type of beige, maybe some type of gray, but they are yellow. And while I definitely love a warmer color palette, I am not feeling this color at all. And it's to the point where I feel like I cannot live with it and I don't even live there yet. So when we started looking at building the house and we initially picked out all of our Thankfully, I got a redo. All of our initial picks for the design center, I was looking into paint already because I was very into the grays and I was looking at every shade of gray, seeing what color my walls were going to be. So I've been researching paint for, I mean, over a year now, but it was always something that I thought would be a little bit further along in the process. And even though now I like this nice kind of neutral, warm color palette, Yellow is not it. So I'm working on getting paint estimates and it is not going to be cheap and this is something that really hurts. But I've painted things myself before and first of all, I am not a great painter. I don't have the patience for it. I don't have the, you know, fine expertise, motor skills. It's just, it's not for me. But there's just so much that goes into it and the more I learn, the more I realize that I have to be so particular and it's just a much slower process then I think we really want to hear. Long intro, so let's get into it. What we're going over today is anything and everything about picking out your paint color. I will have a separate video once we get in and I'm able to you know, show all of these things a little bit more in depth and the actual paint process itself and all of that. So this is going to be broken up into three different sections. Our first section is just going to be kind of paint 101. First thing we're looking at is just, there are different paint companies so a color you might have heard a lot about is probably from a very specific company. Now you can usually color match a lot across companies, but it can get a little bit difficult. There are different kind of grades or qualities of paint companies. We're looking at companies like PPG, Valspar, Bayer, Benjamin Moore, Sherwin-Williams, Farrell and Ball. There are so, so many out there and there are definitely a huge scale of price ranges. So when you're looking at your project, there are a couple things you'll wanna keep in mind and also it will be a little bit the contractor you're working with. They might have a preferred paint company. So we'll get into that in a bit. Within each paint company, you will also have different levels of paint. So I'm looking at Benjamin Moore colors right now. So that's the one that I'll kind of speak to a little bit more here just because I'm more familiar with it right now. But you have kind of their entry level Ben tier. You go up to Regal Select and all the way up to their Aura collection. Now, as you move up these tiers, yes, you're going to be paying more, but you're paying for quality here. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. A lot of time these higher paint tiers will have different kind of promises like a lower VOC, so your volatile organic compounds, that kind of off-gassing and that paint smell might be lower or essentially non-existent in these higher tier paints. You might get something like a paint and primer built in. It might be something more like a one or two coat guarantee or promise. So something to keep in mind, if your walls are, you know, hail navy and you want to go with simply white or chantilly lace, that's going to take a lot of work and you probably want to invest in a higher tier or higher quality paint that is going to provide that extra coverage. Now, if your walls are white and you're going to that hail navy, you're probably not going to need to prime as much. So it's just, you have to think about where you're starting versus where you want to go to really see what your best investment is going to be. There's kind of no point in choosing a lower quality paint if you're going to need four coats of it Whereas yes, you might have more upfront cost with a higher quality, but you can get away with one or two. So it's just always that give and take. I would certainly ask a professional. I am going based off of my experience, my research. So definitely speak to somebody who knows what they're talking about. But as a general overview, these are the things that you wanna start thinking about. Each paint is going to have something called an LRV or a light reflectance value. This is a scale from zero to 100 that tells you about how light the paint is going to be. Zero is your truest black, 100 is your truest white, 
and then everything fits on a scale in between. Now you never really get to zero or 100, but those 90s are really going to be those ultra bright, pure kind of stark whites. Whereas when you're getting in those single digits, we are looking very, very deep, rich color wise there. Another thing you'll need to think about is the sheen. So we have anything from flat up to high gloss. Your flat is going to be great at providing the most cover for any type of imperfections, but it is not something that's going to be very durable. Those shinier ones will have that durability, but it will also show off any imperfections of your walls. Generally speaking, flat is going to be something more for your ceilings. You'll have your matte or your eggshell for your walls because it has that little bit of a shine, very muted, but it provides that extra little bit of durability. So you can kind of wipe away at your wall without completely destroying the paint job. Moving up to your satin or your semi-gloss, those kind of higher sheen looks that you see on your trim or your doors, that's really where that kind of extra durability plays in. Anywhere that's a little bit higher traffic, you tend to want something a little bit more Whereas your low traffic areas where you don't have to worry about things banging up against your walls, that you can go with that lesser sheen. This is historically why you see kind of a higher sheen in your bathrooms and in your kitchen. It's just for that wipeability. Now there are some lines like Benjamin Moore's Aura paint line that do come in matte finishes that are mold mildew resistant and a little bit higher durability, but just note those differences there. So for me, we're looking at flat for the ceilings. I would love to have a matte finish for the walls and then the semi-gloss or whatever kind of the, the paint is that's already there for the trim, the wainscoting, the doors, all of that. Undertones is something that is going to be extremely important. Each paint starts out basically as a white base and then colorant is put in at different levels to make it the color that you end up with. Something that I've found has been notoriously difficult is white paint. There's no such thing as white paint. It is cool, it is warm, it is creamy, it is, there's just, there's so much. So I would highly suggest going to the website to make sure that you are reading about the color, just so you can get a better idea of where on the color wheel it really lies. If we're looking at that kind of red, orange, yellow, we're looking at it leaning warmer. If we're looking at the blues, purples, greens, it's leaning a little bit cooler. Now this is going to have a lot to do with how you want to pick your paint, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. And finally, I mentioned primer very briefly. You don't always need to prime your walls. It's something that for builder grade, I will probably have to do, or at least get a paint and primer in one because those new walls tend to soak up so much paint. If you've ever painted a wall that has pretty much never been painted before, you've seen it just, it's so porous and the paint just gets sucked right into the wall in some places. So it might be worth looking into there. Or again, if you're looking to cover up something, or if you're using a very light shade, something with a very high LRV, you might want to consider that primer. Again, speak to your paint expert so that they can help guide you as to where you can use a primer, where you might be able to save some money without needing to use it. But just keep in mind, the primer might be necessary. Moving into part two, how do you choose a paint color? The first thing I will say is do not rely on the colors in the store and do not rely on paint chips. Now paint chips are great to pick up and take home. Again, don't trust the store lighting. It's gonna be very different than the lighting in your home. But the thing is they're just very small and it's not going to be the same as the surface of your wall. So for example, I picked up these paint chips and obviously I'm looking at some off-whites, but you can see they're very small. So it gives me a good idea. You can definitely see the difference between everything here. But if I'm trying to really, so I have cloud white here. If I'm trying to put that up on the wall to really see, it just doesn't give me a really great visual because again, it's small. It's going to behave differently when it's actually painted on a wall. And just keep in mind, this paper is just not going to be the same. It's just not going to give you the best representation. Now it's great for helping pick out things and for helping see a little bit more clearly those undertones we talked about. So I'll take super white, for example. I was looking at a bunch of different colors and you can see that they all look very kind of warm, except for one. So I had looked at Super White. Some places were saying it leaned a little warmer, others a little cooler. Now, if you look at the paint chip here, which I'm sorry if you can't see it all that well, they just look a little bluish. And as you go down, you can typically see something a little bit darker of the same kind of color. 
So we can take White Dove, for example, which is another one I'm looking into. You can kind of see as it gets a little bit darker, it has a little bit more of that kind of yellow, beigey, gray kind of shade to it. I know I just said a lot of different colors, but they're all true. Or you could see the same here with the Swiss Coffee, how kind of brown yellow it gets. Or with Cloud White, so that's this one here. But again, you can see how much really cream and yellow goes into it as you kind of go down the line of the same color chip. So it really helps to visualize and put things into perspective, but you also have to keep in mind that how I perceive color might be different than how you perceive color, and it's definitely going to be different to how it shows in your home. Next up, you can also pick up these kind of booklets that they'll have in the store, and they will show visuals of different colors and how they look on a wall here. So definitely do it for your research purposes, but again, this is not going to cut it when especially you're looking at, say, a whole house painting. Another option you have to help visualize, you have things like sample eyes, which are those kind of sticky, they're not sticky, they're not going to hurt your walls, but they're larger sheets that you can put up and take down off your wall so you can kind of see it in a larger setting in different rooms throughout the day at different times. You also have foam boards. So I bought a couple of these so you can kind of see here. I have Simply White, I have White Dove. And one of the things that is really going to be helpful is if you look at these compared to something very white. Now I don't have a piece of paper or something, but I'll just compare these two together to kind of give you a little bit of an idea because when you look at this, you might not be able to really tell the difference between, say, the white dove and cloud white. You can see that there's a difference, but it's not totally evident if you're not quite sure what to look for. But when you do put it up against something like the Simply White background, you can see the undertones a little bit better. Now, Simply White is a little bit more warm leaning. There is some yellow creaminess in it. It's very light. Um, its LRV is 89 or something like that. But now we can really see where White Dove starts to have that kind of grayish creaminess to it. And then the yellow in Cloud White really starts to come out too. So always having something that is very, very white and stark, I would say a piece of paper to compare your colors to is going to be helpful in really visualizing that undertone. Some of them look very, very similar otherwise. Now with these larger pieces, this is something that again, gives me a much better idea. It will still look a little bit different when it's painted on the wall. Now the house is not ours for another couple of weeks. So what I plan on doing is going in with these boards. Pretty sure we're not going to end up with cloud white, but it'll be a good example. You can really start to see the difference between this wall is kind of a, the walls in the apartment are kind of like a grayish beige, but you can start to see the difference. Now what you really want to do is have these in different areas of your home where you can see them throughout the day. Even better, if you had it up against a piece of trim, it would give you a better visual, again, having it next to something white, as long as your trim is white, of course, some trim is not. Most trim tends to be a white or a very bright off-white, but that will help you to see if they're going to go together as well. Sometimes trim and paint can bring out different undertones that clash. It might make the paint look a little bit dingy. It might make your floors look a little bit dingy or dirty. So there's a lot that the paint color can influence depending on its surroundings. The first one we're really gonna talk about here is light. Light is going to be very different in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, when you have your lights on, whether the room faces north, south, east, or west. So that's going to influence whether it gets light in the morning, whether that light is cool, whether that light is warm, maybe it gets bright direct sunlight, maybe it's only a little bit off to the side sometimes. And all of this is something you want to see. So like I said in the beginning, patience is going to be key and it's going to take a little bit longer than you probably want it to. I would highly suggest getting the actual paint sample. This is just the small half pint, I think it is. Get this up on your wall in patches in different spaces throughout your room. By the trim, by a corner, by a window. And you want to look through those throughout the day. You want to see what the paint looks like in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, with just your ambient light, with the lights on in your house, and really see how it behaves. It will change drastically. Something that looks like a very clean, warm white in one room might look kind of gray and dingy in another. So it's definitely something 
that it is worth your time to buy the sample and to get it up on your wall. Two coats is probably what you'll want if you're starting with something fairly light. If you're starting with something dark, again, you might have to do a couple more to really get that true color. It won't be a perfect fit as the color around you might influence how you see it a little bit, but it's kind of the best we can do. If this color is going in your kitchen, make sure that you have it close enough to your cabinets so that you can see how those colors work off of each other. Same with your countertops. You'd be surprised how much those colors can play against each other and how sometimes it works and it's wonderful. And other times, even though you were so sure that that's the right color, maybe it doesn't look right when it's next to some of your fixed elements. So now that I've brought up the fixed elements, this kind of rolls into the third part as to when is the best time to paint? Now, I would love to get everything painted before we move in. It would be done. All we would have to do is move everything in. We don't have to get you know furniture covered. Unfortunately, that is probably not the best way to go about it. First of all, the timing for me personally won't allow us to do that. But even if you're in a position where you could get everything painted before you move everything in, I am not personally convinced that that is the best route to take. I did mention that your fixed elements, so that's going to be your flooring, your cabinetry, those big items that you're not likely to change very often, those are going to influence the lighting and how you perceive everything from your walls. It can throw some shades warmer, some cooler, it can just clash all together. Now, obviously when you move in, those fixed elements are already there, so it's not that big of a deal, right? Going back to the point before about looking at it throughout the day, it might be hard to do that when you're not actually living there. There might be certain times a day where if you're across from a red brick house, that that red makes your wall look pink and you wouldn't see that unless you're actually there throughout the day. Maybe you back to a big forest and that green is pouring in and it makes your colors look a little bit off that you wouldn't have noticed until you're actually living in the space. One of the things that I'm a little nervous about is I talked about buying couches earlier, you know, we're going with an ivory fabric. Our walls are already very yellow right now. And looking at some of my paint samples, I don't want the couch to look dingy. I don't want it to look yellow. Now, I love that it will be a little bit of a warm off-white, but I still want it to lean like that, a little warm off-white, not yellow. And some of these can really influence how that looks. So I do want to get the furniture in to see how it plays with some of the paint swatches that I am going to put up on the walls. It makes the process a little bit more painful and cumbersome and delays everything, but I do think it will be worth it. And I think it will give me the best idea of really seeing everything in the space. If you disagree, I would love to hear about that below. So leave me a comment if you did and how that worked out for you. Or again, I'm learning this as I go too. So if I'm about to make a huge mistake, again, I can't do too much about it because of when we have to be out of here and into the house, but let me know. I'd love to hear about it. Paint is something that can completely change the look of your home. And I think it is definitely something that is worth the investment. I say that now because I don't have the quote and I'm sure that is going to hurt tremendously when I see that dollar figure. But for now, I stand by it at least that it will be worth the investment. And I know that that shade of yellow that it is right now is just not going to work with what we're going to be doing and how I want the home to look and present. If you have a paint project coming up or if you have any other tips and tricks, I would love to hear about it. I do hope you'll stick around for more videos. Again, I will be showing how this all actually works as we're in process of everything. So stay tuned. It will be a couple more weeks before I'm able to get that out to you. But please be sure to like and subscribe. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Until next time. Bye.